Magic 8-Ball, will my students find something wacky to do with this week's coding project? Trust me, you don't want to know. So we're making a Magic 8-Ball today in Scratch. It's a super simple project that even beginner Scratchers will find very accessible. We're going to use list variables to create random responses and then have a computer voice or your own recorded voice say them as well as having a speech balloon. All that and more coming right up. So I've got a starter file here with some of the graphics that you'll need to get going with this. Of course, you can design your own Magic 8 Ball or whatever variation you want here. But to save you some trouble, you can load up the file up above and that will get you started here. So I've got a couple of different options, a Magic 8 Ball. And I've also got a Magic Cheese Ball in case you have cheesier tastes and humor. And lastly, I've got a Magic Crystal Ball here that you can also use. They all kind of look similar to each other and they can be used interchangeably. Just pick one of them and uh, go with that theme. I've got just a little bit of code set up here for my 8-ball, and that's just a starting position, so if I accidentally jiggle this around and get it out of place, I can click the green flag to get it uh, relocated again to the proper location. Now, we're going to simulate the idea of shaking this magic 8-ball by making it so that whenever we click it, it's going to shake to the left and right. So we're going to start that with a when this sprite clicked event block which will make this game touch sensitive as well in case you're playing on an iPad or tablet. Uh, from there, we just want to change its X coordinate a little bit to the left, a little bit to the right. We're going to use a glide command to make it a little smoother. We want that movement to be fairly quick, so I'm going to change the time to 0.1 seconds. Our starting X is 16, so we're going to make it jiggle to the left first uh, by moving over back down to 0, so a difference of 16 to the left. Then I'm going to duplicate that block, and I'll go in the opposite direction to 16 plus 16, which is 32 on the right here. So you can increase those numbers or decrease them depending on how much wiggle you need here. At the end of that wiggling motion though, we're going to want to come back to the middle again. So we're going to use that go to X block uh, just to bring us right back to the initial position again. Okay, so let's test that out here. You can see that we're wiggling quite nicely. I do want that to happen a few times though. So I'm going to grab a repeat block here and I'm going to put the two glide blocks inside and leave that last positioning block outside of the loop here. So now uh, let's repeat that, let's say, three times here. And there we go, it'll shake three times. And then we're going to get our answer from the Magic 8-Ball. You could change this to a random number if you wanted to, or you could increase or decrease the number of that repeat, whatever floats your boat. Let's dress that up with a little sound effect. I've already taken the liberty of loading up a scratch sound called Wand that plays that familiar harp sound that anyone who's ever watched a movie about a magician or witch will recognize. We're going to place that right under when the sprite is clicked so that the sound overlaps with the wiggling. And you can see here when we click, we get a nice satisfying kind of magical sound effect going here with our wiggling. So once that happens, we're ready to give our answer. The magic eight ball is supposed to give us some kind of a prediction here. We're going to do that with a say command. So I'm going to go to my looks menu here and grab a say hello for two seconds. So, theoretically, we're going to have it say some kind of a predictive answer. We're going to ask it a question, and it's going to say yes, no, or whatever. Let's just simulate that right now with a yes. And you can see that it says yes right after. The problem is we don't want it saying the same thing every time, so we're going to have to randomize what it says here. To do that, we're going to need to use a list variable. Now, you guys will remember that list variables are a special kind of variable that allows you to contain more than one piece of information in it. Imagine like a shopping list. It doesn't have just apples, but apples and bananas and bread and milk on it. And so a list is just a way of storing a whole bunch of variables in one convenient place and they're all gathered together under one category. Let's go ahead and create that list. Under variables here, there's a little white button called make a list. We'll click on that. And now it's prompting me for a name. I'm just going to type in the name of my list, which is obviously going to be called answers. There we go. So we can make that list visible on the screen here by clicking on the little checkbox beside the word answers. And that will create a list up at the top here that we can start to fill in. Now you can't do this in full screen mode. It's going to have to be in editor mode. And to create your first one, you want to click on the little plus sign here. And we'll type a yes here. 
and if you hit enter it will automatically set you up for the next block here where I can type a no and we can keep going down this list. So here's a chance to express yourself creatively instead of just having boring yes no answers you can come up with something really fun here. In the past I've had students do fun ideas like a passive aggressive magic eight ball. or a clinically depressed magic eight ball, or whatever kind of wacky idea you can come up with. Stop asking, go away. So let's go ahead and fill in some answers here. Okay, so I've got eight answers on my list here right now, and that'll be enough. You can have as many or as few as you want here. Eight seems like a fairly good number. So with that done, we can hide our list now. I'm going to click back on that blue check mark and make that disappear from my screen so that we don't have any spoilers for our potential game players. All right, so we're, the next mission here is going to be to get this say block here saying a random item off of that list. So it's going to take a couple of blocks to get that done. We're going to be building up a kind of a complex command inside of this say block here that's going to select something random from the list. So we're going to start off with this block here that says item one of answers. So answers again is the name of our list and you can test out what this block is going to spit out by clicking on it. So if I select item one of answers, you can see that it's telling me yes. And if I select item two of answers, it's going to give me the second item on the list, etc. Let's go with item five on my list, which is you would ask something like that, etc, etc. So it seems like this is getting us closer, whatever I put in here. So I'm going to drop this in where it says yes now. And now it will play back one of these answers. Let's leave it on number five here right now and simulate that. And so there's my answer. You would ask something like that. So now we're a little bit closer. We are reading off that list, but now we want this to be random. So I, instead of a number here, I'm gonna select a random number. Let's go to our operators and grab a pick random one to 10. Now we wanna pick from the length of the list. So I could put pick random from one to eight here, but then if I had a ninth item to my list, I'm gonna to have to update that. And the easier way to handle this is to tell it to pick a random number between one and the number of total items on the list here. There is a block that'll help us out with that if we go down to our list variables again. There's an item here called length of answers. And if we plunk that into the second number spot here, that will actually pick from the number of answers that's actually available to us. And so now when I click my magic eight ball, you'll see that every time I do it, I get a different answer from my list here. Again. Beautiful, trust me, you don't wanna know. I'm gonna take the fifth on that. There we go. So this is basically functioning now. We have a perfectly functioning magic eight ball. The only remaining thing to do here is see if we can make it even more fun and funky. So there's a couple of different things you could do with this. I'm gonna start by going and making my Magic 8-Ball talk using a computer-generated voice as well as having a voice balloon here. So to do that, we're gonna to have to load up the special Scratch add-on down here at the bottom left. We're gonna to go to our uh, optional plugins for Scratch and we're gonna grab the text-to-speech option here. And that's gonna create a couple of new blocks for us here. I'm gonna grab uh, the top block here that says speak hello and you can see hello that it makes the computer say whatever has been typed into this box here you can change the tone of the voice using this set voice command we can make it super high pitched for example hello or we can make it really low uh, like a giant hello there we go i'm just going to stick with the default alto voice though because that will work fine for these purposes hello. So the goal here is going to be to get our Magic 8 Ball speaking the same thing that it's saying here with the text bubble. There's going to be a couple of hitches we hit along the way here. First of all is one of timing. So I'm just going to paste a longer answer into here. We're going to have it say, trust me, you don't want to know, just so we can simulate it saying something that takes a little longer than the half second it takes to say hello. 
Okay, so let's try placing this in front of the save command and, and have a look at what happens. Trust me, you don't want to know. And so you can see here, well, the, first of all, the things aren't synchronized with each other. We'll deal with that later. But you can see... Trust me, you don't want to know. ...that the computer's waiting for that entire speech-to-text routine to be done before it goes ahead and plays the voice bubble here. We want those two things happening simultaneously, and it turns out doing it in the opposite order doesn't help at all, because this say command also waits for the timer to run out. Trust me. You don't want to know. Before it says it's text command here. So how do we get both these things happening simultaneously? Well, we don't have any options here with the text-to-speech bubble, but we do have options with a say command. There's a variant here under looks that says just say instead of say for two seconds. So I can take the contents of the say command, drop it in there, and then run my program, and you'll see. Trust me, you don't want to know. There we go, we're still not synchronized here, but you can see that the timing is synchronized, even if the wording isn't. So, so that's good, except now our text command is stuck there on the screen. How do we empty that out? Well, after all of this is done, we're gonna grab another say command and we're just gonna fill it with a blankness. We're just gonna delete the word hello, and that will, after this guy's done talking, make that speech bubble disappear. Let's try that one more time. Trust me, you don't want to know. There we go, and you can see it disappears. Let's try that one more time. Trust me, you don't want to know. Oh, and it actually did match up there. Beautiful. Okay, so our timing problems are solved. Now we have to synchronize what our character is saying across these two different ways of talking. Now, that's a little bit more complicated than you would think. My first instinct when I was coding this the first time was to duplicate this set of blocks here and just have it say the Trust same me. thing. You don't want to know. The problem, though, is... No. It's not synchronizing. We're not getting the same answer both times. Can you guys figure out why? If you're on the ball here, you'll realize that each time it's saying or speaking something, it's picking a different random number here. So we're going to have to get our random number selected first and then get both these guys to say the same item on the list. So we're going to need a little bit of a different approach here. So we're going to have to pick our random number before we actually end up saying the thing that we're going to say here and then use that same random number twice. To do that, we're going to have to create an ordinary variable, a non-list variable here. So we'll click on the make a variable button and we'll call it selected answer. There we go. We don't need to change any of these other options around. So we're going to set that variable right here. So we're going to set selected answer. We're going to make it a random number. So let's go back to our pick random. We'll drop that into the spot there where the number goes. And it's going to be from one through the length of answers, the same that we've done up here. So there we go. So that's going to set that variable selected answer to a random number. It's going to spit out a number between one and the length of the list here. And that number we're going to want to feed into this item command. A certain number, an, a certain answer number we're going to have it say here. So let's go ahead and put item number of answers here. And in that spot where the number is, we're going to drop that variable. So I'm going to find the orange bubble here that says selected answers and drop it where right now there's a number five. So now it's going to say that item. We can do the same thing in our speech command here. So let's duplicate that and drop it in there. No. And you can see now that every time we click, yes. we're getting perfectly I don't know. synchronized text. Ask again. Ask again. Lovely. So that's working quite nicely now. I did want to suggest one other alternative, which is instead of having the computer do the voice, we can try to record our own voice and do some fun stuff with that. So we're going to need to have a look at our answer list here. I'm going to call that up again by clicking on the little checker box here. And I'm going to read these out to the computer using a funny voice. Um, so let's go over to our sound commands here and we'll grab the record button which will call up our recording interface and from there we can record our first sound yes 
There we go. We can preview our sound by hitting play. Yes. Now you can see there's a bunch of emptiness at the beginning and the end, and we want that sound to happen exactly when we tell it to and not have some blank at the beginning. So I'm gonna grab these parentheses and squeeze them a little bit so that all the unnecessary sounds are gone from that. Let's preview that. Yes. There we go, perfect. Let's click on save. And we're gonna number these answers here. So instead of calling this recording one, I'm just gonna give it the number one here. Beautiful. All right, I'm gonna do that for the other eight commands and then we can start coding. Okay, so our eight sounds have recorded. A few little things I want to clean up first, though. Let's play some funny voice effects here. I'm going to speed up my voice a little bit to make it a little more cartoonish. So I'm going to click that faster button right here to speed up my yes. voice. Yes. A little cartoonishly. Let's do that. No. Now. No way. There we go. I don't know. You would. Oh, I'm going to take the fifth on that. Trust me, you don't want to know. Ask again. There we go. So we've got a funny little spin on those sound effects. The last thing we're going to have to do is we're going to need these numbers to actually line up with the number of the sound effect file. Because when we tell it to play a number, uh, a sound number, it's not going to look at the, num at the name of the, f of the sound effect. It's going to look at its position in the list here. So right now, our sound number one is actually in position number two, which is no good. The way to solve that is to take our top sound here, the one sound, and just drag it down to the bottom so it's the last on the list. And now our number one is our item one, and everything's working out beautifully. So let's go back to our code here. I'm going to hide that list. We don't need to see that anymore. So we're going to want to replace this speak command with a sound effect here. And to do that, let's go over to our sound commands here. In this case, we're going to use a play sound until done because we actually have already set up a delay here where our th the thing is talking and we don't want to blank it out until after our sound effect is finished playing. So we're going to grab play sound until done here. And we're going to have to put something in this spot where the word wand is right now that will tell it to play the number that we've just selected in our random selection here. So we don't want it to, in this case, uh, for the say command, this series of commands here will actually spit out the word ask again. We don't want that. We just want the number of the selected answer, which in this case is eight. So all we have to put, put into this wand, the, the name of the sound here, is just that number that we came up with when we selected our variable. So let's grab selected answer, and we'll plunk that into where the sound effect is. And you'll see when I click on this, that it will play the sound number eight, which is ask again. Ask again. There we go, perfect. All right, then we'll blank that out. We can trash this stuff now. And let's give our magic eight ball one final spin here. Yes. No way. No. You would ask something like that. All right, so we've got something really fun here. So there you have it, a really fun little project that's super easy to code and has all kinds of potential for hijinks uh, in both the answers and the way that you dress this up with graphics. Remember we've got some built-in costumes here that will let you change this to a cheese ball or a uh, crystal ball, but it's you could really substitute whatever graphics you want to. You could put a dice here, you could put an earth or a moon, you could also um, have the text underneath do some some flashy stuff, changing sizes, wiggling. You could have an introduction screen, um, an ending screen, uh, some background music running if you wanted to. You could have flashing lights shining and uh, moving around on the screen. Uh, there's almost no end to the ways that you can customize this and do fun stuff with it. So if you do come up with a really cool remix, do share it with me. If I like what I see, I'm gonna put it on my weekend live stream and you can show the whole world what you worked on. Thanks so much for joining me. I'll be back again soon with even more fun coding projects. See you then and happy coding!